with the highest torque of any naturally aspirated reduction engine, and one of the most advanced pushrod engines ever made, the Dodge Viper V10 is an American-made powerhouse. With over 800 Nm of torque, 650 horsepower, and 29 lap records, let's see what makes the Dodge Viper an engine legend. Conceived in 1988 by Chrysler's Advanced Design Studios, with the concept car appearing in 1989, the Dodge Viper became a reality when it was released in 1992. Designed by a team of 85 engineers on a production budget of just $70 million, the car proved to be a long-term success for Dodge. Between 1991 and 2017, Dodge produced five generations of Viper, with each generation being faster than the previous. The slowest Viper still has a 0-60 time of 4.5 seconds, with the fastest taking just 3.5. Of all the various Viper models though, the 5th generation American Club Racing, or ACR, is the fastest, holding 29 lap records to date. The Viper also saw success in motorsport, with the Chrysler Viper GTSR seeing 262 races with an impressive 163 wins. The Viper has a 90 degree V10 engine based on the Chrysler LA Magnum V8, ranging from 8 to 8.4 litres. The initial V10 Viper was 8 litres and produced 400 horsepower and 630 Nm of torque. The Gen 2 engine had reduced exhaust back pressure and improved cylinder flow, taking power up to 450 horsepower. The Gen 3 engine now featured a new engine block, new cylinder heads, revised camshafts, and new intake and exhaust manifolds. The engine now produced 510 horsepower and 725 Nm of torque. The Gen 4 engine had a further revised engine block, cylinder heads, engine valves, manifolds, and oiling system. A variable valve timing system was added to the engine with a cam in cam design that was unique to this engine. Power was now at 600 horsepower and 759 Nm of torque. For the fifth and final Viper engine, forged pistons, a revised VVT camshaft, a composite intake manifold, and sodium filled exhaust valves were added. Power was now at 650 horsepower. This was a 61% increase over the first generation. Up until the fourth generation engine, fixed valve timing was used. The valve timing of an engine has to be optimised for a particular engine speed range, meaning compromises everywhere else. The perfect engine would put out a continuously flat torque curve at full load, but this cannot be achieved across the entire engine speed range. Here we can see the fifth generation Viper's performance with fixed valve timing. The cams are optimised for peak torque at 5000 RPM. With the addition of variable timing on the exhaust cam, the overlap between the exhaust and intake valves can be controlled. This was only applied to the exhaust cam due to the focus being on improving combustion stability, emissions and peak power. The Viper already produced ample torque at low engine speeds, so the introduction of a variable intake cam would only introduce unnecessary cost and complexity. Here we can see a valve timing diagram showing lift against crankshaft angle for an individual cylinder. By controlling the phase or position of the exhaust cam, the amount of overlap with the intake valve can be controlled and optimised for a particular condition. Even though variable valve timing was ubiquitous in production vehicles at the time, the application of this novel cam and cam system was a first for a two-valve production head. In a typical four-valve head, the intake and exhaust valves will be driven off their own camshafts. In a two-valve head like the Viper, these are all on one shaft. The cam and can system allows for the exhaust valves to be independently controlled. This is achieved by having the intake and exhaust cams on two separate, yet concentric shafts. Eventually the Viper came to an end in 2017, in some ways marking an end of an era for large capacity engines, as nearly all manufacturers had shifted to a trend of downsizing engines. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.